Hey, welcome to Rock Life Podcast. We are here again. Uh, we are kicking off, we have kicked off a new sermon series here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center in San Bernardino, California. And we are just so excited to delve into it. Again, this podcast, these conversations are meant to be supplemental and add a more robust idea and thought into what we are learning on our weekends, uh, our weekend messages. So again, our Your World series has kicked off. We started off with marriage. Uh, my name is Antonio. Welcome. I'm here with Pastor Dan. And uh, again, each week we are going to be going into some of those questions coming off of that previous weekend. Uh, so Pastor Dan, we kicked off with marriage week number one. Um, and so wh- any thoughts just off the bat from, from week one? You know, I thought it was great. Um, I was actually uh, pleasantly surprised with the response yeah. of the people. And, um, you know, sometimes when you dive into a subject like this, uh, definitely there's a group of people um, that are very aware of uh, the pain of marriage. You know, divorcees, people who are, are widows or widowers. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously singles that, that want to be married. There's, there's definitely sensitive subjects that, that you get around uh, individuals, and I know that this one could stir up some of those things. Um, but overall, I thought uh, even from those specific groups of people, you know, we, we challenged people to, to be mature, to lean in, to, to find something from God about it, and I think that they really did that and responded. You know, hopefully that didn't come on too strong. I know sometimes you can say things even in a nice way and it still hurts. But, um, you know, we've got a great church and uh, we've got people that are very mature and wonderful, you know. And then, uh, like I said, if they didn't like the message, yeah. Sunday night was great. <laughs> well, last night was great. Wednesday <laughs> <That> was great. <laughs> so, Well, yeah. I thought I did think you did a great job of helping I- anyone, regardless of the season. Yes, it's on marriage. So right off the bat, you think, OK, this might be most applicable for someone in marriage. Uh, and we see that in Scripture, how that's important. Um, but at the same time, I thought you did a, a very good job of pointing out the facts of whether you've been married and you're not, uh, whether you're single or maybe it's something that you're going to be married. Uh, there was something in it for all of us. So I, I did think that was uh, very well done. And again, this this is an encouragement for uh, everyone watching. I'm, I'm glad you're watching. I'm glad you're listening. Uh, but again, you might hear some things. If you haven't heard the message, go back and hear week one of the marriage series uh, again, because this is meant to be a, uh, supplemental to right. what is going on. So you might you're not going to get all the nuggets here. So make sure you check that out. Uh, but what we are going to do is be able to pull some more of that because it's not a Q and A up there on a Sunday. Yeah. Um, but one of the first thoughts, Pastor Dan, I know you you led off the message uh, really by defining what marriage is biblically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and even in your definition, you, you, there was some applause. You want give us that quote again? Yeah, um, it's it's one biological man, one biological woman in a covenant relationship for their lifetime. Yeah. You know, and and we uh, unfortunately in this day and age have to define things even more. It used to be yeah. one man, one woman, right, right. Uh, one lifetime. You know, that yeah. sort of a thing. Very simple, um, but. Uh, as society starts moving boundary lines and redefining things, yeah. um, we have to stick to the biblical definitions of what yeah. God says, you know, and, and that's important for us to yeah. know what marriage is so that we can operate in it and define what it is, but also what it isn't. Yeah, right. Exactly. And, and I, you know, it, in the definition, it wasn't a dig. It wasn't meant to be, hey, if Not you enough. don't think this way, it's the Bible, to, you know, because there's going to be cultural waves and but the Bible remains the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Pastor Dan, like you said, we were defining what it is and what it isn't. Uh, one of the things that we've had a conversation about was there are a lot of the things that maybe people assume to be marriage or act like marriage. And so we want to touch on that um, because what are what isn't marriage as well? Because, you know, I've talked to people, I'm sure you've talked to people where, you know, they've been living together several years and, well, it's like we're married or th- isn't this practically the same? Well, why is it important that we also recognize what isn't. Yeah, and in fact, being a pastor for 20 years here at The Rock, um, you know, I've encountered people where I've talked to them, and they'll say my husband or my wife or, you know, my in-laws or things yeah. like that, and come to find out that they've never had a marriage covenant. Right. You know, they've, they've lived together, they've had children together, and um, they're, they're not planning on mm-hmm. separation or anything right. like that. And so, you know, in some senses, those are good things that they're committed, uh, that they're not going to abandon their family. Um, however, with those individuals, when I find out that they haven't had that covenant right. time together where they're, they're coming in agreement and they're, they're allowing God to seal that union, 
uh, by his spirit because it is a spiritual thing. Marriage is a spiritual thing. Covenant is a spiritual thing. It's yeah. a joining. And I don't know how God does that, but it's a joining of two people to become one. Right. Now, now the Bible does talk about that those that join themselves to a prostitute, 1 Corinthians, are right. become one with them in flesh. Right. But there's a spiritual connection and something that goes deeper with marriage. So even though, yeah, you may be one, you may be living together, you may have even joint bank accounts and things like that, there's definitely a, a appearance of it. Without that marriage covenant, it's not, uh, you know, what, what I would consider, and I believe what in the eyes of God would be a legitimate marriage, yeah. you know? Well, then let me ask it to you this way, Pastor Dan. Then why does the legal document matter? Because, well... The legal document doesn't matter as much as the spiritual reality, right. you know. The legal document, yeah, you can go to a courthouse. And oftentimes I tell people, man, if you're burning, right. you're living together, go to the courthouse, yeah. get married, yeah. and, and at least... And, and the reason why that matters, again, it's not about the paper. It's about yeah. the fact that you're standing before a official mm -hmm. and you're making a vow. Yeah. Even though it's in front of an ungodly official, they, they may not be a Christian, you know, that, that judge or that person there at the, the county, they may not be a Christian. They, they may be some other religion or an atheist. Yeah. And yet, God still listens to our vows, yeah. and that is the covenant ceremony where you're saying, I promise, I will, you know, yeah. we're joining our lives together. And so that's really the piece of paper. Yeah, you get the paper with it that says that you did that. But what does that represent? It's, it's just like college. You know, people, why do, why do I want to spend all this money for a piece of paper on the wall? Right. Well, I get that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, but what does that represent? It yeah. represents the fact that you invested time to learn and as well to put thought together and have an understanding so that when people see the paper, they know to this level, mm -hmm. this person is able to understand these, these yeah. things, you yeah. know. And so that's what it represents, you know. It's just like the dollar represents gold, right? Somewhere, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, but that's where where that piece of paper and that ceremony mm -hmm. represents two lives being joined together by God. Right. And so that's why it's important, is because uh, you know, without that, what's to stop you from going and and doing that with someone else, or with right. uh, just leaving when when times get tough? You know, there's no covenant, there's right. no agreement. Yeah. Um, and people say, well, I've, I've lived a decade this way or 20 years this yeah. way. Great. But do you love God enough yeah. to do things his way? Right. And, and I, I see that because when it does get relegated just to a ceremony or we don't ascribe to this traditional or the legalities of it, we, we make this covenant. And again, as, as believers, why it's important is because it's an, it's an act. It's the representation. And you're right. Otherwise, you can just walk. It's almost like creating it forces the idea of hoops, right? Okay, because we got married, if we were want to end this, then we do have to formally go through divorce, and that has yeah. costs, and then there's these, and then there's children involved, and, and it's, it, it adds to a sense of responsibility mm -hmm. versus I'm just going to cut and run. Yeah. It, it costs me nothing. There's no ties to it. And oftentimes, you know, stereotypically, it's the men not pushing because it's like, oh, I don't have to... I, I get to lose responsibility versus, or the finances, and I don't want to have to split my money. Yeah. So why, why are we thinking this way? Yeah. Uh, and not to get too much on the technical side, but as believers where it falls is, there is a sense of the law of the land. We want to observe the fact sure. that this is what it is. So I do think it's important to touch on that. And many of you listening might be in that boat where you have just not gotten married, but you consider yourself married. And, you know, we as pastors are here you know, to talk through these things and help you to get there. But before God, if you are not married, um, I, you know, I, you're not doing it right. You know, I, I hate to say, uh, you know, and so we want to walk you through what that would look like. There's not judgment there, you know, and, and we know that going through that process isn't just magically make something better, but we do want to get you there because we want you to do it right before the Lord. Um, so, you know, I remember I said it harshly one time I was young and ignorant, but I was like, oh, so you're just playing house. And it, offend, it really hurt that person. And looking back, well, it's the truth. And that's what, you know, I, I didn't need to present it that way. Sure. Um, so in, in some sense, you know, we, want, we are sensitive to people's thoughts. Maybe they're children of divorce or had bad yeah. uh, experiences, but that doesn't keep us from wanting to do things right and upright before yeah. God. And, and I think sometimes that even, uh, like you mentioned, um, with having children, uh, you know, even if people are, are living separate and they, they fall into sin, you know, there are some very well-meaning believers that, you know, have a past or 
I mean, my goodness, we live in these earth suits, right? We have desires and passions, yeah. and things do happen, and we understand that. And God has made a provision for that in the blood of Jesus. You know, there's forgiveness available. Mm -hmm. and, and realize that God's words to Cain still apply today. If you do will, will you not be accepted? Right. But if not, sin lies at the door and its desires for you. Yeah. And so, uh, but he says, but you should rule over it, right? You, you, should, you should be the one that's in control of your life. And so, yeah, if there are kids involved, um, a lot of times people with intention of good things, well, I need to take care of these kids now. Yeah. They're my responsibility. will move into the house. Their finances start to come and join. And then they hear a message like this that says, hey, if you're not married, you need to be separate until marriage. Right. So that, number one, you don't fall into the temptation of fornication. Right. And number two, so that you don't even give the appearance of evil, right? right? Yeah. And that's where sometimes people say, well, I'll sleep in one room and I'll sleep in the other. Yeah. How easy it is to walk across the hall, right. yeah. you know? Yeah. And then as well, the appearance to other people. Because right. what are they thinking? Yeah. They're in the same house, they're obviously having sex, right? right? Yeah. And, and so we're told not to even give the appearance or the hint, one translation says. Yeah. We're hinting at things, you know? So we say move out. Yeah. Uh, we had a, a precious couple in our church and they heard this message and they were living together. And we said, hey, come into the office. We'll do an in-office wedding. Yeah. Um, you know, just call the offices. We'll get you guys married and you guys can, can be together yeah. under God with his approval and his blessing. Yeah. Well, we also have a policy here that any spiritual guidance is we say, hey, it's, it's a two week buffer because of our schedules, yeah. timelines, how busy we are here at the church. And then as well, it gives people time to prepare uh, and get time off work and come in, you know, if they need to, that sort of a thing. Well, within office weddings, we usually try and do it as soon as we can, right? right? Because yeah. we don't want people out. Yeah. Well, they didn't know what the spiritual guidance session was for that we were going to do an in-office yeah. wedding. Yeah. So they put it two weeks out. So the, the, the guy who's now the husband, yeah. he spent two weeks sleeping in his car right. just so that he could be pure before God so that when they finally were able to come into the offices, get married, that sort of thing, they could come back together, right. you know? Right. And uh, I just thought, what a heart, you know? Mm -hmm. And many times people say, well, how do I do this? You know, are, financially, it's going to be hard. I can't afford another room, um, you know, that sort of thing. And that's where I say, hey, lean on your family, lean on your friends. And if you have to, my goodness, sleep in the car. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you will live. Yeah. God will take care of you. And, and I believe that God honors those that honor Him, mm -hmm. right? That's, yeah. We see that all throughout the Word. Yeah. Just preach the message on it. Yeah. And, and so when we honor him with our marriage, yeah. honor him with our purity, with our lives, man, I tell you, God's going to bless you. Yeah. He'll take care of your life. So good. And that, that was just the first intro of your message right, right off the top. Yeah. And again, there's so much there, but I think it is beneficial to define some of those things because um, where, where we are as a society right now, and not, again, not to bring shame, or, but it, it's, it's important because oftentimes... I think this is cool because maybe we hear something in a message that isn't applying to where we are currently at in life, mm -hmm. but it also equips us through His Word to be able to talk to our friends and other believers. Sure. Again, we're all full-time ministers, so I'm hearing the Word in a message like, okay, well, that's not where I'm at. Like, instead of tuning out, but I'm going to hear because I'm going to come across someone who is there, right? So say someone's li listened to the message and they've been married 10 years and things are going great, but they also understand that there are people that are in this case where they're they're, they're, they know someone who is calling themselves a marriage but doesn't go through the definition of that. Right. So they can lovingly approach someone and, and walk someone through that with the Word of God. And so that's you know an encouragement for all of you. Listening, instead of just tuning something out, we'll be able to, and you touched on that over the weekend as well. Tried to. Again, I, yeah. I don't know that I did the best job about <laughs> telling people to grow up and be yeah. mature, you yeah. know, and, and probably could have said that with some more tact. Yeah, no, you, but, you did. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I, I think our church is mature enough, and they know my heart right, right. more than anything. And so for the ones that don't, hey, if yeah. you're watching this, you don't know my heart, and you said, he's really harsh with that. Hey, I love you. It's all good. <laughs> well, Pastor, we, we won't go, at, you know, break down each point. Um, but I, I, there were some questions that I think each point kind of said, hey, like if, if you would have said, everyone get that, any questions? There might have been some hands that gone up, and that's what we want to accomplish in our time uh, on this podcast. Um, so, you know, you talked about uh, the spiritual headship and, and some of the roles there. I love how you, you did go in to talk about how women, there is still authority and value in, in, yes. in, in womanhood. So it's not you know, God said, you're more important, you're not. You, you went and, and showed us in Scripture where that comes from. But there, we still see in, the, in this passage in Ephesians the distinction for spiritual headship. So one of the questions I had here, um, what is an example where spiritual, spiritual headship shows? 
Meaning, um, what, what's an example where, it, where there would need to be like, hey, as a spiritual head, this is the decision, this is the call. What, what might that look like? You know, the, uh, I think to my own experience, you yeah. know, in my own life, and, and I could probably count the number of times on one hand right. that I had to tell my wife, this is how it needs to be, right. and you're going to have to submit to this whether you like it or not, right. you know, and, and she's just said, okay, as long as uh, we, we know where we stand, you've had the information, um, you know, that we've had the conversation, and usually that doesn't come at the beginning, right. it comes at the end of a yeah. long yeah. discussion, prayer, um, you know, so, so like I said, that, that headship, um, you know, and that authority in the home, some great examples, I think, are, are things like, what is the d- overall direction of our house? What is the vision for our lives, you know? Is there a scripture we're standing on? Um, you know, a, a lot of times it, it looks like, um, y- you know, I, I gave some specific examples of setting aside time for spiritual conversations, mm-hmm. um, for setting aside times for for church and for prayer, for Bible study, yeah. um, as well, just just uh, as men being present. You know, um, I, I had mentioned that there's a lot of men who, even though they're in the home, they're absent. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was a period of time with my family where my parents were having challenges in their marriage, mm-hmm. and even though my dad was in the home, he was still absent. He was out in the garage tinkering with uh, computers or radios and, and, you know, smoking cigarettes and that sort of a thing, and, and um, I remember it caused challenges in the home because he, he was there, yeah. but he wasn't present. Right. And, and that's where I think husbands and fathers especially being present, being engaged, um, knowing what's going on in the house, you know, uh, when the child is having a, a hard time, not just letting the wife take care of it because she's nurturing. Yeah. I, I mean, they, they need the nurture. They need a father's embrace and a father's hug. They need his love, his, his acceptance, but they also need to be challenged. Yeah. They, they need the, the, you know, concise, focused uh, approach of a man. Mm-hmm to tackle a subject right. and you know there's been many times um, with both my, my girl and my boys yeah. that they've needed a father to come in and walk them through that thought and then they needed the mother to come in yeah. you know and to reinforce with love and her unique perspective yeah. you know yeah. so I think those are those are all areas you know and then in things like hey where are we going to live yeah. um, where are we going to uh, go to church you know um, this crosses over into making your wife happy and fulfilled as well as uh, nurturing her. We talked about um, things like environment and the yeah. nurture, right? Yeah. You know, where a woman lives is going to affect her life right. and, and her comfort. Her, uh, you know, if she, if she doesn't feel safe in a neighborhood, right. you've got an issue in your home, right. right? And so the man should look at that and say, well, I'm not going to take her to this unsafe neighborhood. Or uh, just because I know someone are going to get a great deal on a house, yeah. do I want my wife feeling unsafe when she's home alone? Mm-hmm when I'm at work or when, you know, I'm away or whatever, um, do I want that environment for my wife? Mm -hmm. You know, that's where the spiritual head takes a look at that and says, I will pay more and live less in these areas so that I can afford that in order to make my wife feel safe when she's home. And so the vacation is a staycation because we're just going to drive to and from the beach because we can't afford a hotel, but my wife feels safe at home. Those are the sacrifices that we have to make as a spiritual head. And, uh, and, and we may have to, to explain those thought processes yeah. to our wives because they're not mind readers. Right. You know, um, they're not going to just jump in there and go, oh, I get it right away. You know, it's like, hey, I'm giving you the nice house, but the yeah. sacrifice is, yeah. you know, car, yeah. vacation, you know, some of those extras right. that we would like. We, we maybe not be able to get right. clothes as often as we'd like to, you know, and, and, and if you have kids, hey, the money's going to the kids, right? Yeah. Um, so those are the things that, that I believe as spiritual head, we're looking at those things and initiating those spiritual conversations. Yeah. When you see the child struggling, hey, what's going on in your life? Yeah. Uh, do you have scriptures that you're standing on? Let's pray together, you know, and just taking those times to be that right. spiritual. It's almost like being the priest of the home, right. you know. Um, yeah. I know that's not maybe a term that a lot of people are familiar with, but, uh, you know, when you think about the responsibility of the priest, they tended to the flame of the, the candle. They made yeah. sure that there was the Holy Spirit, right? That's the oil pouring in the oil lighting that candle, shining the light, made sure that there was bread, right? We know that the bread on the table, that's like the Word of God, that the right. Word is available. And, and so husbands, as the spiritual head, if we're the priest of our home, we're, we're bringing the Word in, yeah. we're making sure the Holy Spirit's leading us, yeah. we're, we're doing what we need to do, yeah. attending to those needs. And then if there is sin, that sort yeah. of thing, hey, there's a sacrifice. Right. The blood of Jesus is available. And I love that, Pastor, because that, 
that is attainable for everything. One of the other questions, and you're answering it already, was what if maybe the husband's not as spiritually mature or has not been following Jesus as long? But I think you're giving the very practical answer is, hey, guess what? It's not how much you know. It's our reliance on God. Absolutely. So as a husband, maybe I haven't been in church as long as my wife. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm not as biblically sound as my wife. But I can submit to Jesus and lead in that way because yeah. I'm just relying on His Word. Sure. What little I do know, I'm going to establish, we go after God. Yeah. And being that, taking that priestship really allows us to really run with that. So I love that. And I, I, I want to point out something that you said that I think is really important. Uh, pastor Dan, you're hearing, Pastor Dan, spiritual pastor, has o- only used the submit woman. The, the submit <laughs> women card. And I, and I think that's, yeah. that's important to know because I, 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 it made me think, like, yeah, a, a lot of the conversations with my wife as well, it's like we talk about them together. Yeah. And so it's not like I have to make all the decisions. Like we, it's, it's going to be more peaceful when you come to the agreement anyways. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there might be the like, well, okay, I mean, I know we've been in prison, like, well, Okay, we talked about all the pros and cons. All right, well, we discussed it. Um, I, I trust you. And then that way it's not, it, it, it's not I lord over my spiritual headship yeah. card. Uh, it's more like we came to this agreement together, and as the spiritual head, we, we can make the final call. And, and I love that because that's where I think some of this thing gets abused. Mm-hmm. Uh, abused, and then the, the, the man is like, well, I'm the head, of, and then they're making all these calls on their own. Mm-hmm. When you would have been better off, that's why, hello, that's why God made Eve. <laughs> because, so you don't have to do all these things alone. But yet we've, in our whatever, made it where we just want to make the call and I'm the boss and submit to me. And, and whereas your spiritual head, and that doesn't mean, I mean, even CEOs have teams, yeah. have vice yeah. presidents yeah. around them, have people that, sure. sure, I'll make the call, but I, it's an informed decision. No, we love the superstars. We love the uh, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk. Right. We love Michael Jordan right. and, uh, you know, Kobe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, these guys, we, we love those guys, right? But there's people around them. There's coaches. There's right. other other yeah. players involved. There's other teams involved and, and people that made them look great, you know? And as men, to humble ourselves, you know, I think a great thing for a man to say is, I don't know. <laughs> Let's pray. You yeah. know, um, what do you think? Yeah. Those are those are perfectly acceptable things to say in a marriage because that's why God gave that woman to you. Especially if you're that guy, that you're not as spiritual as your wife. You know, um, I, I think in many ways, I'm I'm more practical, more on the the educated side of things like that. My wife is more. Uh, emotional and more on the spiritual side of things. I mean, my wife is a spiritual giant. Yeah. And there's times where she's like, thus saith the Lord, you know. Most of the time I'll listen and consider what she says and, and, and realize God's speaking through her and doing that. There have been times, though, that she said, God spoke to me this, and I've not sensed that, right. uh, thought different than that, and had to go and pray. Sometimes God gets me on board mm-hmm. and says, no, listen to your wife. Other times I've had to say, I don't think that's God, you know, and I think we're going to we're going to wait on the Lord and see what God does. Yeah. And in some of those instances, my wife has come back and said, no, you know what? I wasn't hearing right, right. you know, and yeah. and thank you for taking more time or whatever it is. And, and that's where, you know, for those of you husbands that you're like, man, I'm new to this or I'm not as spiritual as my wife or man, she's just a, a spiritual giant yeah. in my eyes. Hey, you're still the head of the house. It, it doesn't mean that you're less than. You know, and men, we have a problem with that, especially when it comes to women for right. some reason. You know, it's yeah. like because we were made first and we should be the priority. And there's that that pride in us. And if we'll humble ourselves, the Bible says that God will exalt us. Yeah, and so things like, hey, I don't know what God wants to do in this situation. I don't know what decision we should make. Let's pray. Let's give it more time. Uh, let's let's invite uh, some more mature believers yeah. to come in and speak into our lives. You know, those are good things. Get into a bunker group here at the church and find out what these other men who are spiritual are doing, you know, and and how they make decisions. What are your processes? What do you say to your wife? You know, how do you handle arguments? Those are wonderful things to investigate and to learn about. You know, we do it with our interests, with hobbies, sports, with uh, woodworking, cars, you know, we'll dive into those things. Um, I mean, some of you guys will do a deep dive on on things that you will never do in your entire life, you know, engineering, mechanics, you're uh, you're not doing any of that for your career or for life. But you'd interest you, so you'll do this deep dive and learn everything you can about it. But when it comes to our marriages, we don't take the time to learn. Yeah. Yesterday, I just got stuck on a TikTok of how ramen noodles are made. And it's just like, <laughs> and I'm just watching this video so intently, like, oh, wow, that's cool. I don't even eat ramen noodles. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> but it was really I don't even <laughs> like ramen noodles. I tell you, when I was in college, man, we, we had the 10 cent a bag. Yeah. And we were poor, so yeah, no. it was like, hey, one dollar gets us ten meals, let's go. But the rabbit trail, and like you're saying, it's so easy to get down on things when we don't, don't even, but anyway, that's, ooh, a, a squirrel. Right? Yeah, but, yeah, but but that's where, yeah. yeah, let's do a deep dive into how, how should we, you know, and I, I would guard against everybody's opinions on TikTok yeah, and, yeah. you know, Instagram and all that kind of stuff, but, but what does God have to say? Right. Get in your word, yeah. talk to a friend that's spiritual, you know, yeah. just come and sit with a pastor, make an appointment with us, two yeah. weeks. yeah. <laughs> I love it, Pastor. Uh, well, moving on, next question. Again, one of the other points here. Um, we're talking about sacrificing, giving preference. You know, you, you talked about how we give of ourselves. Yeah. And, and one of the takeaways for me was the, the word that I got was just preference. It's a great that word. I have to I prefer my wife over myself, which is so against what our flesh would say, right? Our flesh wants to look out for ourselves. Yeah. So as a husband, I have to prefer my wife. And w what does that look like? And it made me think of, in my own marriage, there have been times where when I've done this poorly, I remember there was a, a season where I, I just, I, I, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to do that? And my wife sits me down and goes, well, if you're not going to look out for me, what you're telling me is I have to go look out for myself. Wow. Yeah. And we realize that that becomes the culture in our home, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we're not preferring each other. So we just have to look out for ourselves. Right. I don't have a partner in this. We're supposed to be partners. But yet your actions, your words are telling me I don't have a partner. So I have to go look out for myself. And I, it was a wake up call. And it still has to be a wake up call because that's so dangerous in a marriage yeah. where now everyone's kind of running their own lanes. So busy in our schedule. Kids have to go here. School has to go here. Work has to do this. And everyone, it's kind of everyone's fending for themselves right. and no one's looking out for one another. There's no preference. Right. What, what would you, might you add that can be a, a resourceful tool uh, in Scripture or just a, a practical thing that maybe you've done in your life to help you keep that sense of preference in your marriage? Yeah, you know, there's some great Scriptures on that. If you do a, a word search on preference, you'll find some great Scriptures. Mm -hmm. The Book of Romans has one, preferring one another. Um, you know, and it's something that we're supposed to do as believers in community yeah. and how much more in a marriage mm -hmm. you know when we talk about submitting to one another in the fear of the lord and when we talk about uh you know valuing our lives cherishing them giving preference to them what makes them happy yeah. you know i love that question that that i posed to the congregation what makes you smile yeah. what makes your wife smile those are things that that you can find her preference mm -hmm. like we said colors and that's thing uh, it's a stupid illustration, but it, it'll give uh, probably some of the understanding of what we're talking about. My wife, when we were in our first home and our second home, um, she wanted to decorate, obviously. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we were young. Um, I was very immature in many senses, and, um, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. And so when it came to buying things that I didn't want to buy, mm -hmm. right? Here's the selfish part yeah, of me yeah. coming out. I didn't want to buy that. I would fight tooth and nail against it. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, some of these stores like Home Goods or Tuesday Morning, you know, that have like mm -hmm. discounted decor yeah. and things yeah. like that. My wife was a, you know, a weekend warrior shopper. She would go to all the bargain places yeah. and find stuff that she loved, you know, and she would find things like, um, you know, a, a sign that said salt and pepper. Right. Now, to me, I hate that, you know, it's like, why do I need something that says salt on my yeah. wall? You know, like, why do I need pepper on my wall? Um, things like that. I, I don't want something telling me to live, laugh, love, right. you know, like I'll just do it. You know, <laughs> I used to hate bumper stickers and t-shirts yeah. that told me what to do. I'm yeah. like, I don't need your yeah. opinions being forced on me right. on your right. bumper or right. on your shirt, you know, so I, I'm just kind of stupid that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, but my wife likes that stuff, yeah. you know, and I remember uh, Pastor Deborah, I think, found the salt and pepper and was giving it to Jess. And I said, I, I just fought on it. You know, yeah. we, we weren't even spending money on it, right. but I just didn't want it. And so I didn't like it. And, uh, and so I told Jess, because Jess asked me, what do you think? I said, no, I don't like that. I don't want that. And so she said, oh, okay, well, my mom likes it, so she'll put it up in her house. And, um, you know, I remember going over to Pastor Jim and Deborah's house, and there was salt and pepper on their walls. And um, I was fine with it there, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and Pastor Jim said, uh, said Dan, uh, see the signs? I said, yeah. I said, I don't want that on my walls. He goes, well, I have it on my walls. And I could tell what he was saying and not saying anything. He was yeah. just saying, Dan, get over yourself. <laughs> you know, like, it's not a big deal, you know? And I said, well, I'm not having, you know, 
stuff I don't like in my house. Uh, you know, I'm not having, you know, flowers on my bed and this and that. And, and he looked at me again and said, I have flowers on my bed, <laughs> you know. And, and so that was something that I had to give up. Mm-hmm. I had to lay my pride down right. and just say, honey, whatever you want to do. Right. You know, I, if you like that color, let's put it on the wall. Right. If you want flowers on the bed, hey, let's put flowers on the bed, yeah. you know. Um, and, and we have a beautiful room. My wife has decorated beautifully. In this new house, there's been a lot of stuff that maybe at first glance I thought, what on earth, you know? But I've said, oh, good, honey, let's do it. And now some of that stuff is my favorite stuff because it is unique. Yeah. And she does have a great eye and partnered up with the other things in our home. I'm like, wow, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, I, I've seen over the years as in our marriages, as we do preference and get rid of maybe some of our likes, it almost becomes a good, healthy competition of now you want to outserve each other. Sure. You know, you get, I, I've, I've found myself in, in modes or streaks sometimes of, well, you want to serve your wife. And, so, and then what you're not even thinking you're doing, then now they want to serve you back. Yeah. And then you want to serve up one up them. And, ser- uh-huh. and then what you're doing is you're looking out for one another, giving preference right. to one another. So as a, as a man, as a husband, I'm doing my job, but it also has, it's now reaping benefits because because yeah. it, it's not about you always have to give everything up it, it's you're setting a tone you're setting yes. a culture and i think it's very important and the we, scripture we says he who loves his wife mm-hmm. loves himself right right and in loving your wife you find out that mm-hmm. actually it's coming around that whatever you sow you reap right right loving your wife means yeah. loving yourself because it eventually is going to come back to right. you in the wonderful blessing right. of a happy marriage right. Who starves themselves, right? We see like who doesn't feed themselves when they're hungry, you know? Like, right? yeah. So, and 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 I think it's really cool when we see that in marriage. Uh, another one, I know we want to make sure that we honor some of your time. We we want to keep these uh, informative, but not take too long. Maybe you're on a drive, maybe you're cleaning the house, maybe you're mowing the lawn. That's when I listen to podcasts. But I want to make sure that we're touching on some of these because it was so rich. And this is, as a recap, we went through. This, four commandments. We're going to hit four more this upcoming weekend. So we'll be touching on some of those. And then we get into for men. What do the ladies have to do? Right. Well, we'll we'll get into some of that. Um, But, you know, you talked about one of the points in in being fulfilled and making our wives fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Um, One of those things you talked about was understanding maybe even their love language or what their favorite color is. And Mm -hmm. sometimes you ask a husband, they might not even know these things. But what what does that really mean, Pastor Dan? We have to keep our spouse fulfilled. Is it, you know, are we at their beck and call? Or you know, it, this could sound someone who's trying to implement this. So, so am I just kind of working for my wife? What, what is? What do we see here in the scriptures? Well, obviously, there's obligations that we have, and um, you know, when we take a look at what the the woman's responsibility is, we do see that it is mutual submission. Right that she's going to give preference to her husband like we've been talking about, just as the husband's preferring the wife. And like you said, that can be fun. That can actually be very rich and rewarding. And so we don't see it as a grind or just, uh, you know, am I responsible for their happiness? You know, that can be a a very negative attitude. Um, You know, going back to Cain and Abel, am I my brother's keeper? And I believe the answer to that is yes. You know, we are responsible for one another and we're to lift one another up, bear one another's burdens. And in a good marriage, you're, you're not only responsible for their happiness, you're also there to care for them in their hurts, yeah. in their down moments, uh, when they mess up, because we're all sinful people, yeah. you know, to, to, to lift them up and restore such a one in that spirit of meekness. And I think that's where when we, when we get the bigger picture, the greater picture, yeah. that, again, whatever you're sowing, you're reaping. In making your wife happy, you are going to make yourself more happy than you could ever imagine. Yeah. You know, there are joys that I have when I see a smile on my wife's face that I would never have known if I hadn't have given up something of myself and looked out for her happiness. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some of the greatest things have been when I've been able to surprise my wife because my wife is so inquisitive. She asks too many questions. And she's always asking, what are we doing? Where are we going? Did you do this? Did you do that? Is it this? Is it that? I mean, uh, from the get-go, when we were dating, she got out of me where we were going for her birthday because she just wouldn't let up. You know, she's a hound dog. She just goes after it. And so, um, you know, but but those moments when I've been able to surprise her, when she's been able to to have that, oh, my gosh, you remembered or you were thoughtful or this is what I wanted, you know, and I didn't have to ask. Those have been special joys to me because I don't often get that. 
you know, and, uh, and I think that for men, you'll see when you start looking at your wife's interest and start getting more involved, I mean, you chase the girl at the beginning, right? And you were trying to find everything out about her and then you get the girl and you forget it all, you know? But, but I think that's where to chase after your wife, you know, to pursue her, yeah. you know, uh, those are fun things for men. I mean, we, we were built that way, you know, yeah. we're, we're to be hunters. Yeah. We're to be, yeah. you know, uh, uh, focused and builders and those yeah. sorts of things. And you can build a great marriage, yes. figuring those things out and right. going after them. I, I thought a, a practical note, husbands, I'll encourage you, make yourself a cheat card. You know, Pastor Dan, yeah. you brought up the example of, well, what are their favorite flowers? Find out their favorite flowers, their favorite color, maybe their favorite food or restaurant. And refer to that cheat card as, you know, these are... Because sometimes, like, you would think, you know, but in sometimes the busyness of life, you maybe forget, oh, it's been a long time since we've, I've taken her to this restaurant when I really know uh, where, where she likes to eat. And, and just refer to those things. Bring those, flavor, those flowers. When you're picking a, a gift, make sure it's that color. What, what, you know, yeah. these are the little yeah. things because they also just speak to, I know my wife. I want her to see her fulfilled yeah. and satisfied. Last question, Pastor Dan, we'll wrap it up. Um, or in the area of, provision, a husband taking care of their wife. This can cause a couple different things because, you know, in today's day and age, it's not uncommon that a wife may be making more. Uh, you know, again, it, maybe in the 50s and 60s, it was more common for a husband to work, a, a wife to stay home. Uh, and the, especially in California, the cost of living, oftentimes it's becoming more normal that uh, there are two incomes. And even more now, I was sharing with you, there's a new stat that there are now more women graduates of college and, and university than men, which meaning women are, are getting more educated than even some men. And what that could cause is maybe more, more higher professional jobs uh, with potentially more income. So for a husband, I have to provide for my wife. Does that always mean just more income? Or if this is creating a challenge in our marriage, how do I still provide when I'm not the breadwinner, so to speak? Sure. Well, and, and that has actually been a cause for challenges in people's marriages. Right. You know, um, there have been people that I've known of that when the husband wasn't making as much as the wife, right. the wife actually uh, took privilege, mm -hmm. you know, right. took priority. Hey, yeah. uh, I, I'm the one making all the money, so you're going to do this, right. you know. And, and I don't think that that is, is a godly approach. Mm -hmm. To, to that. I think that women still should have that humble and, and submissive heart that God wants them. The Bible says it's precious in God's sight. Right. Um, you know, Sarah is the example that she, she called Abraham Lord, mm -hmm. you know, and not, not meaning like Lord yeah. God, right. you know, she wasn't worshiping him, right. but, but basically boss, you know, that, hey, you're the boss, all right. right. So you want me to call you my brother, right. while we're here? Right. Sure, because, I mean, it wasn't a full lie, right? right? right. But it was covering up the truth that they were married. Right. You know, and so she said, if that's what you want to do, I'll do that. And even in taking the wrong action, God still covered and protected Sarah through that. Yeah. And that, that's why it's so precious in God's sight, because God said, hey, even if the man of God is headed in the wrong direction, yeah. I'll take care of you. Right. And that's where women need to trust that, hey, God's got us, and that God gave me this man, mm -hmm. and God gave me for this man. Right. So uh, he's not here for me. I'm here for him. Um, but with, with things like specifically how much money the woman makes versus the man, again, you're in covenant. It's all yours. Yeah. What a blessing that you can make that amount of money. Yeah. You know? And it is hard to live in California. It's hard to live anywhere these days. I mean, the prices in Oregon and Washington, and if you start looking up New York and different places, I know we reach people in different areas. And so, yeah, there may be some places where it's more traditional or easier or, or less money. Yeah. But other places, my goodness, it's out of control. And so, yeah, two-income homes, it's a, it's a must. And if the guy can only get a certain job with a certain amount, and then the woman somehow lands a greater job, like you said, because she's got a, a higher level of education, and so they're paying more for this position, or she's able to do specialized work because of that, she might actually be what's, quote, unquote, the breadwinner. Right. My thing is, is, as long as the man is diligent, mm -hmm. as long as the man is, is making bread, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what are you doing, you know, to contribute to this? And then the the structure in the home still stands. He's still the head, spiritual head of the house. Right. Yeah. He may not be the financial, you know, breadwinner in that yeah. term, but he's still the head of the house. And so he's, he's not incapable of making decisions because he's making less money. Yeah. And in the same way, you know, when we talk about providing for your wife, 
you're adding to the physical contribution of the provision of the overall yes. home, but it goes so much more beyond finances. It yeah. goes to, A, are you providing that, that safe place for your wife to come to you? You know, you've had a long day. She's had a long day. Can she come to you after a long day and yeah. just say, oh, I've had a tough day? Yeah. Honey, come here. Put your feet up. Yep. I'll make dinner tonight. Yeah. You know, like, hey, don't worry about the dishes. I got this. Right. I'll put the kids to bed or whatever it is, you know. Uh, or how about this? Tell me about that. Yeah. That, that right there right. means more to your wife yeah. than sometimes the dishes and the laundry and all that kind of stuff that, that she's got on her mind, um, you know, that, that if you would just say, hey, why don't you tell me about that? Yeah. How can I pray for you? Yeah. How can I help? You know, sometimes they, they say, I don't need anything from you. I just need to, to air this. I just need to get it out there, you know, and vent. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they need a pressure release. Sometimes they might say, could I just have Saturday to go? and be with my mom or to go out with the girls or let's go to the beach. You know, they just need a little mind break. Those are things that as the husband, even though you may not be making as much money, you can still provide those things for your wife that that helps her to be happy, helps her to be fulfilled, and that puts her in that environment like we were talking about, and especially when it comes to spiritual things. Are you providing that that spiritual covering for your wife? Are you praying for her? Are you lifting her up? Are you taking her to church? Are you making sure that, you know— after a long week, the family's not lazy and we just want to sleep in. And so we're going to miss church. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody get up, get out of bed. We're going, we're going to take care of this. We can sleep on Saturday, but Sunday is church, you know, or if you're coming to Saturday, then Sunday's, you know, your day to sleep or whatever it is, you know, we've got a million services. So (laughs) sometimes that can, sometimes that's actually a blessing because then you can go to church on Saturday and then the kids can play soccer on Sunday if that's the case, you know. Um, or if you've, you've got a birthday party on Sunday, hey, go to the Sunday night or the Wednesday night, yeah. where, where you're diligent to continue to take the spiritual condition of the home into your care yeah. and say, all right, yeah, we'll go to the birthday party, but we're going to church right. Wednesday night. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're not going to miss. We, we need God, you know, and that's the things that you're providing as a husband, even if you make less money. Yeah. No, I, I don't, because again, you just opened up the reality that there are a lot of non tangible, non you know financial ways to create provision yeah. uh, from listening to doing these things that provide that space and going back to that notion of environment i'm i'm going to provide an environment where my for my wife to feel safe for my wife to feel loved feel supported in in what they're doing and again that doesn't just mean i have to provide financially although provide a home we're right. not we're not shying away from that the bible is saying here um, but again, if that is a, let's not let that be a struggle where if, if there, if it, if you feel, because otherwise some men check out because I can't financially provide and well then I, you know, I feel like a lame and then, you know, I'm not going to provide anything because, yeah. and you get, so now, the, now the wife is carrying everything sure. when you can find ways to provide. I think a great word that is a biblical word is covering, right. you know, good. men are a covering. And even if you don't make as much money, you can still be that spiritual covering, that spiritual head, and, and be a shelter, you know, uh, from, from the storms that come. There's going to be cares and concerns and worries that come at your wife. Yep. Things about the, the kids, things about the home, things about the environment, the, the climate, the spiritual climate, the social climate, the economic climate, the political climate, yep. things that are all around her that if you're involved, you can cover and say, hey, it's going to be okay. God kept... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, he'll keep us. Yeah. He kept Daniel in the lion's den, he'll keep us. You know, there may be things that come against us. Your boss hates you, your, your, your co-workers lied about you, guess what? You hold your head high. If God can take care of them, he'll take care of you. You know, yeah. that's spiritual covering. You're sheltering her from the storm yeah. that's coming against her. Same thing with the, the persecution and the harsh sun that arises, right? You can be that covering that provides shade and cool environment for her to come and say, oh, it's so hot out there, you know, figuratively speaking, yeah. uh, whether it might be the family, yeah. you know, um, it might be that her, her siblings are bugging her or her mom and dad are making decisions that she doesn't agree with. And so she's coming to you and she's saying, ah, oh, this is this is hard for me to handle. You provide that covering of refreshment. Hey, listen, we're going to pray for them. So we're going to love them through this. Yeah. You know, it's going to be all right. Uh, kids are going south. Kids are having a hard time. Kids are, you know, teenagers and they're not your baby anymore. They lost their mind. Hey, 
This is normal. Yeah. They will regain their mind when they yeah. get into their 20s and they realize what life is all about. You know, let's love them through this. Let's continue to discipline. Uh, even if they rail at us, we're, it's okay. I'll, I'll handle the discipline, yeah. right? You reinforce the discipline. Right. Yeah. But this is the direction. Again, you're providing that spiritual direction. We're going to, yeah. as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. This is how it's going to be in our home. And when it's not this way, we're going to have the conversations. Yeah. We're going to have the disciplinary actions, whether it's taking away their phone, whether if they're little, it's a, it's a little spanking, you know, a little yeah. swat across yeah. uh, with the switch, you know, not not abuse, not breaking skin, right. little teeny tiny welt that snaps them back. Oh, wow, yeah. that was wrong. Okay. And then reinforce it with love. Yeah. Right. But as they get older, it's, hey, conversations, right? You're not going to hit them with a the switch anymore. Right. Now it's, hey, you, what you did is wrong. Do you see why? Yeah. And if you don't agree, well, then guess what? This is the way it is in this house, yep. you know? And then there's consequences. I'm taking away the Xbox. I'm taking away the phone. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go out with your friends, you know, things like that. Yeah. And, and that will take the pressure off of your wife because you provided that so covering. Yeah, I, I love that word, covering. Great word. Well, that was good, Pastor Dan. I know that we, uh, that, this was just week one, guys. And so make sure you come into service on the weekends. If not, we'll attach... The link, I think they said we could attach the link for week one. So watch the message, check out the message, and then follow us up here. And then we'll, we'll be back here each week as the weeks go along. Pastor Dan, if you wouldn't mind closing us out in prayer for those yeah. our, our listeners today. Wonderful. I'd love to. Well, let's, let's pray together. Join us in the, your prayer time. If you're driving, obviously, don't take your eyes off the road. But uh, let's pray. Father, we just are so grateful, God, for this wonderful picture that you gave us of our covering, of our high priest, of Jesus and God, I pray, Lord, that each and every one of us would just get a better picture of who you are and, and how we live together in unity with you, God. That the marriage is really a beautiful picture of that covenant that we have, God, that we've been given through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for couples, God. I pray for those that may be listening and they're living together, God, that they would follow your ways, God, and they'd get married. Lord, uh, I pray for those that are struggling in their marriages right now, God. Maybe the husband isn't making as much money. That's been a point of contention. Maybe he hasn't been the spiritual head, and that's caused problems. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just align their lives with your word, God, that they would be diligent about the things that they've heard today, God, and that they see in your word most of all, God, not just from us, but, Lord, that they see from the Bible, and that they would apply those things to their lives, and that, God, as they get into their place, like we talked about in the message of a, of a team, everyone's getting in the spot that they've been assigned and that they are called to. Lord, I pray that they would just see their marriages work and flow and that there would be that mutual encouragement and faith and love and growth and care, God. And Lord, I do pray for the single people listening, God. I, I know that they may say this doesn't apply to me, but God, I, I just thank you, Lord, that you're applying it, God, that they're seeing how they can become a better person, how they can be a better Christian, how they can live in covenant with you, and God, should they be married in the future, that they can find their role and their spot and understand those things and, and have a smoother marriage than those who have gone before them because they're learning these principles now. For those that will never be married, God, I thank you, Lord, that they will just be uh, 100% God invested and involved in their relationship with you and that they will just find fulfillment and joy and satisfaction. Lord, we thank you, God, for the weeks ahead, God, as we learn more, that we grow more, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. 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 All right, guys, we'll see you next time.